Chart update, 19th November data. Second wave, optional. Unsurprisingly, while the West is going for the second wave, the Far East and Africa have no time for it. The strange case of the optional virus. Note to censors, we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. The optional virus world rankings. I'll show maximized in a second. Same old, same old. South America, no idea what's going on there, but Venezuela is notable for contrast. Belgium, EU HQ, still ranking number one. The UK and US only outranked by South America, so their position as power centre's worst hit is still sound. A sec selection of close allies in TAN and some surprising independence purple in the Tier 1 worst hit. Africa and the Far East naturally brush this off. Poor Australia and New Zealand. They get the good, excellent for New Zealand results, but as Anglo nations bear the brunt of the agenda anyway. Bottom line, this remains an optional virus. Where you are in the world determines the severity. And please don't tell me that 166 times worse than the Far East is down to pollution in Belgium or the UK. Sorry I've been away. Burned out to a cinder, happy to see the back of Covid, but the agenda rolls on and we're in, again, optional, second wave, so thought we'd better do our bit. The key event was the Valence Witty briefing of 21st September, where naturally they lied on three critical issues, and on one of those, the exponential virus, in the UK joint statement of the 25th, that has now become official government policy. The three lies were case growth doubling every seven days, 10% per day. Now it's 3.5% to 4%. Constant growth, exponential, explicit statement of exponential, no, no virus has ever been exponential, including COVID, including in the UK. It's not a case demic, or just due to chest testing. Uh, yes it is. Cases are up six times, deaths down 30%, no deaths to match. Of course, having been set up for a second wave with a fraudulent briefing, we should hardly be surprised when that second wave materialises. Hospitals are restocked, care homes are ready to go, and flu season is available. Not difficult to have a second wave on demand as required. Another bit of work reveals something disturbing. 80% of declared COVID NHS deaths were inpatients, which I take to mean existing patients admitted for reasons other than COVID. Only 20% were admissions with COVID. That worked out, from memory, at either 7% of the hospital patient population for 1 in 14 patients, or vice versa, 14% for 1 in 7. Either way, not good odds when you thought you were in a safe place. Basically, the NHS was harvested for COVID deaths. Simple as that. Overall, NHS inpatient and care home deaths likewise represented 80% of UK COVID deaths. Bottom line, if you're in the care of professionals, it turned out not to be very caring at all. While the rest of the population was being blamed and told they were at risk, locked down to stop the spread, the government trolled the vulnerable in their care for the deaths that would push the agenda. That's not conjecture, that's just the reported figures. And then the briefing and a second wave on demand. Not quite as bad as first yet, but as we'll see, second wave is very much an optional event. The Far East naturally didn't bother, barring Australia, which gave it a modest go. The rest of the world, starting with Africa and here Algeria. Look at that mortality, bottom, flatlined. Maybe 20 deaths a day, normalised out of 2464 for a standard population. Just not an issue. South Africa and still dealing with its first wave, with a long climb and slow descent now nevering off. The virus that just won't quit, but at around 100 deaths per day, it's also not a material factor in the country's mortality. 
Zambia, it recognises the existence of the virus, but it doesn't see the need to die from it. If only our politicians were of the same ilk, but then Zambia isn't a global pharmaceutical centre, is it? The Americas and Barbados, either an object lesson in tight controls or an example of a non-threatening virus. Controls certainly are tight, and what the heck, good for them. Pity we won't be back there any time soon. Brazil, and like an opera singer holding a high note, it just doesn't want to come down. If you don't play like a virus and just keep the deaths coming, then you get star ranking in the world charts. Welcome to South America. Worth noting that I've seen at least one video with a politician forcing their way into a COVID hospital to find it empty. Funny that. It seems they can play games down there also. Canada with the second wave not yet in the same league as the first wave. Notice the 10,000 cases per day but only 100 deaths per day. Joys of testing. A case isn't what it used to be but it's now exaggerated at least 10 times. Basically infected as tested. Note the overall mortality at 4.5%. So this democracy ending pandemic is still only 1 in 20 of all deaths. And with 90% plus being old and sick, the very people who'd be dying anyway, it ought to be a minor footnote. But it's not, is it? Ecuador continues its sporadic approach to data, but again, at 100 deaths per day versus 2464 normal deaths, it's hardly a critical factor in the country's mortality. Mexico and the opera singer again just doesn't want to quit. Let's call it the new normal and have people keep dying. Even with this unusually persistent behaviour, it still hasn't managed more than 12% of normal deaths. The USA. New York has stopped reporting a full history as far as I can tell, restricting itself to the last three months, hence it's not here. We may assemble a full history in due course. Note the rise in cases here, definite second or even third wave, that July hump, Dependence Day. In cases, but deaths just not playing along. Too busy with election fever, I guess. Europe and Austria, pity, but it's having a real go at a second wave. Interestingly, looking at case death lag, third chart at the bottom, it's utterly simultaneous. Hang on a sec, you're not supposed to die the day you go into hospital. Watch this space. Belgium, home of the EU and the ranking nation in the world, number one, with again a third wave. Again a July bump, did they get ahead of the story? Again nearly as bad as the first wave. Hey ho, it looks so real. Even leading the world, it's still only 18% of normal mortality and those are 90% comorbidities, so call it 1.8% excess to normal if that. Yep, really want to end democracy and embrace the Great Reset for that. Croatia and disappointing to see an independent getting hit and its figures are maybe 800,000 cases a day, 800 deaths per day, both normalised, representing a whopping 34% of daily mortality. Be curious as to what's going on there. Whereas Denmark's version of second wave is maybe 50 deaths a day, normalised versus 2464 normal. Ho hum! Yep, really a big deal. Mortality at the bottom, barely off the bottom axis. Finland, with deaths so sparse you only see the occasional reports. Pink dots, not a trend line. Overall mortality, 1.1%. They just didn't play the Covid game. It's possible, so time to hold our own politicians to account. France loyally pursuing the agenda up there in tier 1 first quartile for deaths, distinctive second wave. Go France! At 2 Germany, be a bit strange if the most powerful nation in Europe didn't play along, but still 2.2% overall mortality. It's hardly something to shake the world up, is it?
reason I'm really disappointed to see figures exceeding the first wave, but again, we're talking about 100% deaths a day, 5% of normal deaths, or 0.5% for nominally healthy people, if that. Yup, alien invasion zombie apocalypse for sure. There really is a point at which you yawn, because if the hype hadn't been selling the death and massive threat, these are numbers that wouldn't even have been noticed, and yet the ranters cry to cancel Christmas to save lives. Sad. Hungry and again disappointing to see an independent going full bore, far worse than the first time. No idea what the reality is, but they're hitting 43% of daily mortality. Either that's really, uh, sorry, either that's real or a really dark game. Who knows? Whereas Iceland is refreshing for those wanting a chill pill. Pink dots so occasional deaths reported, but this ain't shaking their world. Ireland, having been up there in the first wave as a loyal player, is pretty much sitting this one out, at 100 deaths per day nominal, or 5% or so, of normal mortality. 4% in fact. Bravo, Ireland. Italy is heading for a second wave much like the first, it seems. Good team player, Italy. Having avoided the first wave pretty much, it's disappointing to see Malta having a second wave. Hardly a crisis, but not ideal at perhaps 300 to 400 deaths per day versus 2464 for normal mortality. Netherlands right next to EU HQ, and sadly also a team player with a pronounced second wave heading for first wave levels. Norway demonstrating that you don't have to be a player with the occasional death despite that massive surge in cases. If we hadn't witnessed so much other fraudulent science, the transition in cases from useful to useless would be sad. Poland, and where it avoided the first wave pretty much, is really going for it in the second, hitting 40% of daily mortality. No idea what's going on there. Real? Mm, another simultaneous lunge for heaven. Watch to see if it remains so. Portugal, another team player. Wait for the Far East to compare and contrast this pronounced European second wave. Russia, and if those figures had been in the thousands, I'd have called fraud on the long-sustained peak. It may still be fraudulent, but at those levels it's hardly an issue. Second wave picking up, but hardly a crisis. Spain, and after a world-leading fraudulent performance first time around, simultaneous cases and deaths with 322% lag 14 death rate, they're off again. Sweden, our godsend, is a no-lockdown country which doesn't let it off the hook for that long, bizarre, literally abnormal decline. Again, it's mixed role, no lockdown, but still with traces of the agenda. Second wave real? Maybe. Switzerland, with a rational first wave, then death disappeared despite rising cases. Now the recent surge shows a second wave with a vengeance. Someday I'd like to go behind the scenes. A player or just unlucky? Maybe. Turkey and an ambivalent Covid player barely ticking up to 100 deaths per day or 4% of normal mortality. Not much of a second wave, huh? But then Turkey isn't EU either, is it? Australia leading the way in replacing democracy with autocracy so where it had no first wave to speak of, it's showing more willing, but barely touched 100 a day before falling off. That's the Far East view. Covid just don't cut it over there. China, which is really Hubei, the only province to be badly hit first time around, becoming our reference for a standard hit. And where are those deaths? Oh, I forgot. China lied. Unlike the lying Westerners, of course. No second wave. So sorry. Indonesia, snuffling and grunting with daily mortality at 3% peak, overall mortality 0.9%. That's 274 million people who just couldn't get overwhelmed by COVID. Doesn't look very EU, does it? 
Japan, you've got to love a country that peaks in its second wave at 10 deaths a day, 0.2% overall mortality. A perfectly managed contagion. I guess our government never asked or wanted to as to how it was done. Korea, significant for being the first non-China country to complete its primary contagion, again at 10 deaths per day levels, and having a second wave at just under 10 deaths a day. And look at the infected, or cases, a few hundred a day. This is where we come back to that our government, UK, is either incompetent or criminally fraudulent. Given that they've repeatedly lied, I'm going with fraudulent. Malaysia, and again 10 and 10, or maybe 20 to 30 second time around in daily deaths. Noticing a pattern here? Whether EU team players are up at 1,000 deaths a day, Belgium, or in the high hundreds, the Far East only does 10 or so. So what do you think? The entire Far Eastern region is lying, or the lies are closer to home? Again, with the proven lies and fraud in claims and reporting, I'm going with the lies are over here. New Zealand and joys of island nations, just like Barbados, had a few, thanks, no more. Sad to hear the end of democracy over there. They should be celebrating. Instead, they're under tyranny. Thinks we're an island nation. Hmm. Philippines and the closest the Far East comes to a crisis, topping 100 a day, which would be cause for celebration in the West to be that low. Oh well, we should wish for such a second wave. Singapore, for those that want to excuse New York City as being hard hit as a densely populated city, then take a look at this densely populated city. What was hard hit in New York City was honesty, integrity and reality. Thailand, and like Singapore, Barbados, New Zealand, a few deaths the first time around and then nothing. A couple of pink dots indicating a death or two and you wonder or don't why I consider the EU engineered or fraudulent. Vietnam, a favourite for having had a death then cancelling it. In this second wave they've actually decided to have a few deaths, overall mortality 0%, which means less than 0.49%, a lot less. And that wraps up the Far East and rather makes the case that whatever Europe and the US is experiencing it didn't have to be this way. Incompetent or dishonest, you decide. Moving on to the Middle East and near Asia, India, a long drawn out contagion, appropriate perhaps for such a huge country, and nice to see it on the way down. Second wave, it hasn't finished with the first wave. And again, 100 per day tops is fine. Iran, somewhat troubled with near European levels and already on the third wave. I don't have enough of a handle on the local politics or situation to comment further. Iraq and a long drawn out descent from a very early second wave but down to 100 deaths per day so a marginal factor in the country. Israel and disappointing to see it having a second wave suggest that they can be real and again near European levels. We'd need to be a local expert to figure out what's actually happening. Pakistan and having seen off the first wave nicely, not even reaching 100 per day, they're tiptoeing up to 10 a day. Overall mortality 0.5%. Nice what happens when you're not Western aligned. UAE and a nice slide to finish off on. Sure, there's a second wave, sort of, at maybe 20 to 30 a day. Not really a crisis. Someday maybe it would be interesting to see how all the different countries manage their situations. However, the overall picture is clear. The Far East and Africa provide the strongest contrast to our democracy-threatening contagion. So that it seems it's not the contagion that's threatening democracy, but what politicians are doing in its name. Apologies for not being around much, and thank you for the few of you who will be still be here to watch this video. Felt we needed to at least do this update. The agenda rolls on unchecked. We'll continue to support court cases as we're doing now, otherwise we might just have to survive it. People spent their whole lives under the Soviet system.
guess we're finding out what that was like. That's it for now. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrew at amather.com. Either should get to me.